God lives and works today. He never changes, and therefore His truths and commandments never change either. Many people in our present-day world, however, would like to get rid of the Ten Commandments. For the laws of God seem to inhibit them, spoil their fun, and destroy their freedom. The truth, however, is exactly the opposite, as today's meditation by Basilea Schlink will show. The commandments of God tell us what good and evil is. Many believers have met their downfall because they've turned away from God's commandments. If we depart from the commandments, we lose contact with Jesus, the crucified and the resurrected Lord. Only when we recognize the validity of the commandments and acknowledge their claim upon us can we come to the knowledge of our own sins. Only then will we see how often we fail and sin because we ourselves just cannot fulfill the commandments. Only then are we brought to contrition and repentance. In this way, we are always driven to the cross of Jesus Christ, into His arms. However, without the commandments of God, there is no recognition of sin. We feel no urge to resist sin. If sin is no longer recognized as sin, then we don't need Jesus as our Redeemer either. If we aren't willing to capitulate before these standards and to repent, if we aren't willing to trust in the grace of Jesus, in His merciful forgiveness alone, then our spiritual life will dwindle away. Unfortunately, there are countless Christians who have built their foundation on cheap grace. That is, they show no sign of gratitude for the forgiveness of their sins. They don't strive to keep the commandments, they don't want to shed tears of remorse. If the commandments lose their validity, the commission of Jesus Christ for the world also loses its validity. For it was Jesus, the Word, the commandment of God manifested in the flesh, who lived out and proclaimed this one commandment in which all the others were contained, the commandment to love. Without the commandment of God, there would be no more law, no more order in the world, Chaos would reign. When God gave his commandments to his people Israel, he said to them, See, I have set before you this day life and good, death and evil. And this is a reality. We can choose what we want. If we say yes to the commandments, we choose life and good. If we say no, we have decided upon death and evil, for now and eternity. Therefore, it's important for us, especially in these days when so many are rejecting God's laws, to take His commandments seriously. The most intimate union with God is promised to those who are at one with His will and act according to His commandments. We cannot possibly do enough to keep them before our eyes as the standards for our life. God's promises come true, whatever He says, He has told. I know your word is sure, it is a rock secure. What you say comes about, of that there is no doubt. You've been listening to a program written by Basilea Schlink of the Little Land of Canaan. If this program has been a help to you, we would be happy to send you a free leaflet by the same author. Please write to God Lives and Works Today, 9849 North 40th Street, Phoenix, Arizona, 85028-4099. That's God Lives and Works Today, 9849 North 40th Street, Phoenix, Arizona, 85028-4099. God bless you. God lives and works today. We all have a need in our lives, a need for something meaningful that will bring us complete satisfaction. There is only one thing, one person, who can completely fulfill this need. It is Jesus Christ. 
After one of our retreats here on Canaan, a young woman from India wrote to us how she had found this precious pearl, as we will hear in today's meditation. People used to congratulate me for my Christian service. This made me feel ashamed of myself, for I knew that everything was not quite right in my life. I was not happy. I felt like a hypocrite. I tried approaching some religious leaders for help. Most of them could explain in a theoretical way the divine happiness of heaven, but they could not show me how to be happy here, now on earth. I thought to myself, if I cannot be happy here, in this world now, how can I be sure of having a happy life in heaven? This question caused me many sleepless nights. Then the search started. I spent all my savings and bought a ticket to travel around the world. During my journey, I visited some Christian institutions, but in all the places I visited, I found very few people who actually looked happy. On my way back to India, I decided at the last minute to stop and visit Canaan. When I was shown to my room, I noticed some books lying on the table. I picked one up and started to read it. It happened to be Mother Basilea's autobiography. This book opened my eyes. Through it, I found the pearl of great price for which I had been searching. As Mother Basilea discovered in her life, it is love for Jesus that makes a person happy. In my ministry in India, I had been trying all the time to please God by doing some good works. To me, God has been a hard taskmaster. But now I see everything in a different light. I have found the pearl of great price. And what is the secret of finding this pearl? We read it in Matthew 13 verses 45 and 46. A merchant, in search of fine pearls, who on finding one pearl of great value, went and sold all that he had and bought it. This pearl is available for all who will love Jesus with their first love. He is waiting for you to come to him today. Will you do it? If you do, you will experience that he will give you himself his love and his joy. Jesus is love everlasting. He came to us below that are to all his children a selfless love might show. Eternal love is still waiting and bleeds with You've been listening to a program written by Basilea Schlink of the Little Land of Canaan. If this program has been a help to you, we would be happy to send you a free leaflet by the same author. Please write to God Lives and Works Today, 9849 North 40th Street, Phoenix, Arizona, 85028-4099. That's God Lives and Works Today, 9849 North 40th Street. Phoenix, Arizona, 85028-4099. God bless you. God lives and works today. Yes, and like a father, he wants to do good things for his children. But we have to be willing to do something too. Today's meditation by Basilea Schlink will show us what this is.
We have a God whose name is Yea and Amen. He hasn't only given us promises through His Word, but He also fulfills them. However, He doesn't perform His miracles like a magician, but as the Father who loves His children and wants the best for them. This we have experienced in many different ways, both great and small. For example, while we were building the mother house and the chapel, we had a dump cart to transport the sand that we had dug out. And one morning, six times in a row, the cart jumped the tracks. This wasn't just a matter of coincidence. Each time it took a great deal of time and trouble for us to get the dump cart back on the tracks. And finally we went into our small prayer tent on the construction site. Together we prayed, Lord, show us what the obstacle is. Show us why you cannot bless our work today. Then the Lord showed us very clearly that we were judging and criticizing each other in our thoughts. There was no longer a unity of love. After we had asked each other for forgiveness, we began to work again, and the dump cart did not jump the tracks once. Up until this very day, we've continued to experience such things. Only when we let God chastise and punish us can we give Him the opportunity to perform His wonders in our lives. So God is calling to us all, Trust me. Be true children who expect everything from the Father's love, but who also surrender themselves to His chastisements. Such children will experience that God keeps His word. Not only the residents on Canaan, but everyone else who hears this testimony should experience in all their concerns, large and small, that God lives. He answers prayers. All we have to do is to endure in faith. We have to let the Father train and discipline us. We have to pray with all our heart. Then we will experience the miracles of God. God wants to reveal Himself through our lives and show us what a loving Father He is. You have been listening to a program written by Basileus Schlink of the Little Land of Canaan. To learn more about how God lives and works today, visit us at our website, www.canaan.org. That's K-A-N-A-A-N dot org. If you contact us, we would be happy to send you a free inspirational booklet. If you do not have access to the web, please contact this radio station for our postal address. God bless you. God lives and works today. He has established a church of His followers to help Him build His kingdom. But why is it that we experience so little of the kingdom of heaven? Today's meditation by Basilea Schlink will answer this question. How often we preach about love, but don't show it. Or we talk about God's goodness, but do not demonstrate it. Jesus, however, came to build the kingdom of heaven. At the start of his ministry, he said that it was dawning, now he's waiting for it to be established among us. He went the bitter way to death, not only to open the door to heaven for us, but also to redeem us here on earth. Both God and the world are waiting and yearning for his kingdom to be manifested among us Christians. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus said this when he was on earth. Now he says the same thing about his church. 
However, let us ask ourselves, where is it at hand? Where is it possible to say, if you go to this house or to this church, you will become happy? There you will be healed of the suffering of your soul. There you will be surrounded with so much love that it will seem as if you have been born anew. You will taste the fullness of joy because eternal joy is there. Sadly enough, these cases are few and far between. No wonder so many people prefer to spend their Sundays outdoors. There, in the midst of creation, they experience something of the joy and beauty which nature reflects. How painful it is for God. The stones and all of nature must preach because we, his own, keep silence. We do not radiate the joy of redemption and are such poor witnesses to his glory. But why is there so little of God's kingdom in our midst? Why? Only one word brings about the kingdom of heaven. Repent. It is a call as mighty as a peal of thunder. It's a call which cannot be ignored, for it concerns us sinners. And it is not simply any call. It is the call of Scripture. It is a holy law of Scripture that God will only come with his blessings and his kingdom to the heart of a humble soul, that is, to a sinner who has repented the kingdom of heaven remains closed to all others. The kingdom of heaven is a kingdom full of grace. Therefore, only he who lies prostrate at the feet of Jesus in contrition and repentance will experience it, for grace belongs to the repentant sinner. Then he will be blessed. Then he will experience the kingdom of heaven here today. Yes, in all its abundance here on earth. Kingdom. You have been listening to a program written by Basilea Schlink of the Little Land of Canaan. To learn more about how God lives and works today, visit us at our website, www.canaan.org. That's K-A-N-A-A-N dot org. If you contact us, we would be happy to send you a free inspirational booklet. If you do not have access to the web, please contact this radio station for our postal address. God bless you.